Welcome to Naris Technologies. I am Mr. Bhanga Raju and in this video, uh, I will demonstrate how to use inheritance in our applications. Already in my previous two videos about inheritance, we have just been checked out how to implement inheritance and what are the rules that has to be applied or used or we need to follow in case of inheritance. And a continuation video for this, I will give you an idea how exactly inheritance will be used in our application development. Inheritance is something that comes into picture not like in the middle of a project. So, this can come in the middle of the project also, but generally when we start an application in the initial stages only, we plan this inheritance and we implement in our applications. Let us demonstrate. See, generally in DBMS terminology, what is an entity? An entity is something which is associated with a set of attributes. It can be a living or a non-living object, but anything that is associated with a set of attributes is what we call as a entity in our DBMS terminology. And remember, whenever we are going to develop an application, our application mainly deals with these entities. Our application mainly deals with these entities. Suppose you are developing an application for a bank. So, the entity who is associated with the application is a customer. Customer is an entity. You are developing an application for a school. The entity is a student. You are developing an application for a business concern. Employee is an entity. Like this, in every application, there will be a set of entities that are associated with that application. So, mainly we deal with the entities only. Now, talking about this particular entity, what is an entity? Uh, it is a living or a non-living object which is going to be, it is a living or non-living object associated with a set of attributes. See, uh, can we call a phone as an entity? Yes, we can call a phone as an entity. It is not a living object, but it can be called as an entity. It has some attributes. What are the attributes? The company who manufactured the phone, uh, the model number, the price, the size, the weight, the screen width and the features, all, all these things can be considered as a attributes. Can I call a pen as an entity? Yes, you can. It has a color, it has a height, it has a diameter, okay. It is going to have a price, it has a company who manufactured model number, all, all these things can be called as a attributes of this. So, these are non-living. And coming to living objects, what are the living object, living entities? Student is a living entity. Every student has some attributes now, ID, name, address, phone numbers, all these things are the class in which the student studies, all these are the attributes of a student. Employee, employee number, employee name, job, salary, okay, department number, department name, all these things are the attributes of an employee. You take a customer, customer also has some set of attributes. So, generally when we are developing an application, the process will be as following. First, step number one, identify the entities that are associated with the application we are developing, that are associated with the application we are developing. So, what are those uh, entities that are associated with application means? Suppose, I am developing an application for a school. So, let us take an example. There is a school application. I am developing a school application. So, for this application, who are the uh, entities means? Student is an entity. Teaching staff is an entity. Non-teaching staff is an entity. So, like this, uh, we have been just identified three entities now. So, done. Step number two. In the step number two, what you will do, you know, identify the attributes of each and every entity. Like see, student. What are the attributes? Every student has an ID. Every student has a name, every student has some address, even a student does not carry a phone, 
the parents phone number should be maintained in the records of the of the student of the school okay so we just have the phone and apart from this the class in which he was studying okay the marks the person attains the grade is a grade or b grade or something and what is the fees being paid by the student so so many attributes here some few things are just taken as an example that's it next teaching staff teaching staff what are the attributes of a teaching staff id common name address phone designation the job of the person next the salary what is getting and basically teaching staff so very important i require his qualification and also i require to know the information of the subject he is dealing with a subject okay so these are the attributes of a teaching staff now let's come to non teaching staff if you come to non teaching staff then also we have some attributes id name they are very common for every entity address phone next designation next salary and non teaching staff it's no point of uh, knowing about the qualification of his i don't want his qualification now i want to just have the uh, name of the department he works for basically in a school also different departments will be there accounts department will be there marketing department will be there finance department will be there okay so i wanted to just maintain the information to which department he works and uh, the other one what i want to maintain is non teaching staff like a clerk or someone or accountant should be reporting to someone so the reporting manager so mgr id so these are the attributes i have taken for uh, identified for each and every entity okay so this is our second step now after identification of the attributes in the next level what you are required to do is you are required to define classes representing each and every entity why because these particular entities are associated means am i dealing with the appropriate student or a teaching staff or a non teaching staff to represent this characters i need to define the classes now we are going to define the classes in our project now so one class representing student one class representing teaching staff one class representing non teaching staff like this you need to define the classes representing each entity now but see if you are defining three classes now there is a problem what is the problem the problem is there are some common attributes in all the three entities when you have some common attributes in all the three entities if you start defining three separate classes individually there is a code duplication there is a code duplication 100% code duplication why id three times name three times address three times phone number three times like this i have duplication in the code and uh, we are working with an object oriented programming language not like a procedural language and the strength of object oriented programming is reusability if we cannot make use of that reusability there is no point coming into object oriented programming so what you are going to do now is you are just required to eliminate the redundancy or the duplicates here okay so if you don't want to eliminate them and define three separate classes with the duplicates means so i'm telling you you can do this with procedural languages also with the help of structures because a structure also can be used for representing an entity in object oriented programming we use classes for representing entities and in procedural programming we use the structures for representing entities and if you go to relational databases we use tables for representing entities so remember in a dbms a table is an entity if at all you wanted to store some student data what you will do you will create a table called student now and that is your entity now and inside the table you will have some columns what are the columns all the attributes of the student will be the columns of the table so there tables are used for representing entities in procedural structures are used for representing entities in object oriented we use classes for representing entities and unfortunately structure what is the drawback doesn't support inheritance and because it doesn't support inheritance i require to define three structures with a duplicate attribute values what id in all the three name in all the three address in all the three and a phone in all the three so this is completely against the standards of our object oriented programming 
So, let us just do one thing. What you know in the third step, let us not directly define the classes. In the step number 3, what we will do you know? Identify the common attributes of each entity and put them in a hierarchical order. Identify the common attributes of each entity and put them in a hierarchical order. So, what is that identifying the common attributes? Yes, here if you just understand this, there are some common attributes in each and every entity. Identify them first. For all the three entities, what are the common attributes? ID, name, address and phone. So, without defining them in three classes, we will follow a pattern. What is that you know? Let us take one class and uh, define these uh, four attributes in that class. Okay, what is the name of the class? But take a class and define the four attributes in the class. And once after defining the four attributes, if you make that class as a parent class for three, what is the advantage you know? No need to declare ID, name, address and phone for three times now. One time we declare in the parent class and then we are consuming it under all the child classes. So, reusability coming into picture and the main strength of inheritance as I said you, that is reusability, inheritance gives reusability. So, if you want to take the advantage of reusability, the thing what you are going to do is just define a parent class with all common attributes and make it as a parent for all these particular three. So, one class with all the four. Um, generally, parent classes we use generic names to the classes, very generic names. Suppose a class like this public, a generic name person. A student can be called as a person, teaching staff and non-teaching staff, everyone can be called as a person now, a generic name. In this, put up all your common attributes now. What are the common attributes? The common attributes are, what are those? ID, name, address and phone, declare them here. Int ID, string, name, address, phone. I am taking phone also as a string because maybe there can be some plus nine ones and all these things. So, we will just take the phone also as a string. So, all the attributes are present. Now, understand if this class is made as a parent class for student, you are required to declare only remaining four attributes and parent class for teaching staff only four and parent class for non-teaching staff then also only four. So, what happens now? You can just go for defining the classes eliminating the duplicates now. So, first let us define the student class. How? Just a minute. Right now the members are private, they cannot be inherited. So, for inheriting let me just make them as public, public int id and public int string name. Okay. Next, public class student and this class if you inherit from person by default student has four attributes. By default a student is going to have four attributes to it now. Four attributes directly comes to the student. What next? After getting the four attributes now, the next thing what you will do is define the other four attributes. What are the other four attributes? Class, marks, grade and fees. Okay. Int class. Next float marks fees. So, now student has 8 attributes now, 4 inherited from the parent class and 4 that are defined in it. Totally there are 8 attributes in the student. So, now the next class, what is the next class? Teaching staff and teaching staff should be defined with 4 attributes and non-teaching staff with 4 attributes. But if you watch that carefully, the teaching staff and non-teaching staff has again 2 common attributes now. What are the 2 common? designation and salary. So, if you define these two separate classes again duplication comes into picture, I want to eliminate. So, to eliminate that, I am going to define a class called as staff class, public class staff, not teaching staff or not just a staff class, colon person. Once you do this, immediately understand staff has four attributes. What are the four attributes? ID, name, address and phone. Now, I will define these two attributes in the staff class. What are the two? Designation and salary. 
public string designation public double salary now understand staff class contains six attributes now what are the six id name address phone designation and salary now if i make that as a parent class for a teaching staff by default six attributes comes now and you need to define only two more attributes what are the two qualification and subject and if you make it the parent class for non teaching staff then also d name and mgrid so now let us define these two classes public class i am calling teaching colon staff so i am not calling teaching staff colon staff teaching colon staff why you inherit from staff automatically that class becomes a that is going to be called a staff now so teaching actually why you just simply call it teaching is once you inherit from staff automatically it becomes as a teaching staff only now teaching staff so no need to write teaching staff colon staff teaching enough okay it is by default considered as a staff in this declare the remaining two attributes now what are the remaining two attributes string qualification and the subject you are dealing and then come to public class non teaching colon staff what you want here is int mgr id and string d name string d name now understand the teaching staff by default inherited six attributes through staff and now remaining two attributes are defined what are the remaining two qualification and subject so totally contains eight attributes and non teaching staff also inherited six and defined the remaining two contains eight so if you understand student teaching and non teaching so this is basically the third step actually so i defined of the class this is not the third step this is the fourth step actually this is the fourth step what is the fourth step is define the classes representing the entities that are put in hierarchical order so this is the fourth step actually what is the third step watch it i said you identify the common attributes of each entity and put them in a hierarchical order no that is what you should do like this is the third step actually so first i defined you classes and now i'm showing you the property this is the third step what is it identify the common attributes and put them in a hierarchical order watch it first class what is the first class person person contains four attributes id name address and phone and under that we have student and student inherits from person one student inherits from person student by default has four attributes define the remaining four class fees grade and marks and now count it eight attributes for the student now next staff staff contains four attributes because it inherits from person and now you define the remaining two attributes salary and designation so staff contains six attributes under the teaching teaching inherits from staff so by default teaching has six attributes remaining two qualification and subject next non teaching inherits from staff by default six attributes remaining two d name and mgrid tomorrow if you are going to perform a uh, thing like this what is it temporary staff came into picture if a temporary staff comes into picture for a temporary staff also these are common what is it id name address phone are common so what you can do you can just go for inheriting from the person define a new category of class here inheriting from person so commonly you'll get id name address and phone and whatever other attributes we require you can you can just define them can't inherit from staff we can inherit here but generally temporary staff means they don't have salary what we call them is a wage it's called as a wage so it is better to define a class as a temporary staff inheriting from person inherit all the four attributes and then you can just go for for writing the attributes that are required for it like what wage something something you can define in that so that is the process so in the day one we start application development from then only we put a plan and a eye on the we have a plan and we have an eye on this particular um 
application development. What is it? We just go for applying or putting inheritance into picture from day one. So, if you understand the steps here, what is the step one? Identify the entities that are associated with the application we are developing. So, a school application with the three entities. Step two, identify the attributes of each and every entity. Yes, we have done it. We identified the attributes of each entity. Step three, identify the common attributes of each entity and put them in a hierarchical order. So, this is our step three, identification of the common attributes and now they are going to be present in a hierarchical order. They are in a hierarchical order for you right now. Okay? So, this is the step 3 and in the step 4, what you require to do? Define the classes, not class, define the classes representing the entities that are put in the hierarchical order. Now, start writing your classes. First class, person, person with 4 attributes. Second class, student student inheriting from person remaining four attributes third class staff inheriting from person remaining two attributes what are the two salary and designation and the next class is teaching teaching inheriting from staff the remaining two attributes qualification subject and finally non teaching and this non teaching also inherit from staff remaining two attributes mgr id and d name d name MGRID. So, this should be the process how to apply inheritance in our applications.